the Action Group Nightly. My name is David Ristow. I'm the CEO, President, and Founder of the Action Group. Uh, you can check us out on the web at www.theoxengroup.com. We have uh, all your financial analysis needs, investment ideas, uh, financial reports, uh, long-term ratings, all kinds of great stuff to make you a better investor and trader in this market. Uh, tonight's Auction Group Nightly, we'll be recapping uh, the Wednesday, August 3rd market. We'll be looking at some of the uh, positions we uh, took on today, um, as well as some of our other current position exits. Updates on uh, some of our portfolios that we run um, and some of the other financial reports we have. Forecasting the day for tomorrow. And as always, please check out our disclaimer at the end of the video. Uh, well, the market broke its losing streak today, popping off technical levels and helped uh, by better than expected ADP employment number. After seven down days, it uh, looks like we were pretty much due for a... Uh, a rebound, a relief day at some point, and we got that um, to a point today. Uh, we uh, were able to uh, end up about 30 points on the Dow. Uh, definitely not uh, great, but uh, we'll take it. Uh, ISM services came in under expectations, uh, and it was not nearly as poor as ISM manufacturing's miss um, at 52.7 versus expectations of 53.7, but it was a catalyst along with uh, some technical breakdowns throughout the day that did drop us down as low as 160 plus points on the day. Uh, so we did rally back pretty fervently to get about a 200 point swing from the low to the high um, on the day. Um, ADP employment change uh, showed 114,000 jobs were added um, in the last month and that beat the expectations of 100,000. That was a big catalyst for the pre-market and early on in the day we were uh, Holding on fairly well, but as you see, the ISM services numbers, you know, continue to drop, uh, along with most of the other ISM manufacturing uh, type of indexes, uh, indices, and uh, that's going to continue to weigh on uh, the market as long as the uh, ISM uh, services and manufacturing index indices and uh, other ones come out uh, poorly. Uh, you do see early on we were. Uh, we were having a pretty decent day to start out with, you know, bounced around along the flat line and then uh, sort of fell apart um, after that point in time. And uh, that was the low of the day, you see, uh, after we dropped hard on the ISM index miss, that was coupled with, you know, some fears over Europe. And then we did break here, uh, some pretty key support line, 11,800. Uh, we did retake, though, the 11,800 line and held that through the rest of the day and the afternoon. And then uh, got the resistance at the next big line is the 11,900 line. Um, you know, we got some bargains out there right now. A lot of stocks, pretty cheap. Uh, a lot of, you know, stocks moving down to about their 200-day moving average. A lot of, you know, some traders and I think some big money starting to retest the waters a little bit here. But I think a lot, the majority of people are still waiting for that catalyst uh, to come out. Um, but we like to oil at these levels. Uh, it's looking pretty cheap, um, and I'm willing to add to this position actually. So I'm fairly, uh, fairly confident that we'll get a bounce back. You know, everyone's talking, oh, you know, cheap oil. It's great for the market. It's great for everything. Uh, we don't have as much demand anymore. Um, but literally, this is gonna, you know, you look at it. It's been down uh, six out of the last. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, five out of the last six sessions. Uh, five out of the last seven sessions. Um, and the only day it did have a bounce was a very slight bounce. And so it's really been just following the equity markets. And I think if we see some rallying going on in the equity markets and we are seeing some uh, some buying going on coming off these uh, technical levels, we should see oil follow suit. Uh, the $92 per barrel oil line has been pretty strong. Um, we did break it at one point today, but we retook it um, by the close. Um, and, you know, as long as if we see, you know, a good number come out of the initial jobless claims tomorrow, this is going to pop very quickly. Uh, we'll retake that 94 line, I think, on oil. Um, and I think that there is a lot of things that can give a, a rally to oil. And I'm not sure there's as much that can help it break down. That $90 line is, is, is a line in the sand. And you can see right here, this is right after the SBR release. We get down to about this level here. Uh, you know, I highly doubt that we're going to be able to break through that level again. Um, and, you know, that's about at 38 um, and so on UCO. So uh, look for that line as a really, really big support line there. Uh, but I think we will uh, see some support coming into oil here off these levels um, moving forward. Um, but we did, uh, we did put on a TZA uh, uh, bull call hedge, um, bull call spread hedge. Um, with some options just to basically uh, mitigate some of our, you know, our long position in oil, and then we also have uh, three uh, sold puts or uh, uh, bull put spreads 
uh, that allow us to uh, take advantage of stocks holding certain key levels. And those getting a little nervous. Uh, I was very nervous when we were down 160 points today because they were looking uh, mighty weak, and uh, we took back most of those. We got back most of those losses and more. Um, and actually, those uh, a lot of those positions actually look pretty nice at the end of the day. Um, but you know, moving forward here, I think we've got a lot of pressures on the market. I think you know, while yes, maybe we're going to get a small little relief rally here, maybe towards the end of the week, maybe just for tomorrow. Um, I think there are some some headwinds there. Uh, it was it was too far too fast for sure. Um, but uh, given that we've got three uh, bullish options, uh, I thought we needed to add a bearish one just in case we get something. You know, tomorrow we get a real bad initial jobless claims number. We get some more weakness out of Europe or something like that. That could uh, end up impacting us pretty negatively. Um, and I think that you know the market could be setting up for another you know intraday dip maybe maybe not a a, a long term uh long term uh dip but we we definitely can see more downside and uh you know if you look at the long term charts i mean the monthly charts are showing you we're at the we we peaked and we're starting to valley and uh typically when we see that start to happen it could be a a pretty big correction um so we're just a little worried about that uh, I do. I do think the economy is in good shape. I think we have great earnings, um, but you got to be just you know hedging yourself just to be careful out there, just so you don't lose everything you've made. You got to make capital preservation uh, part of your portfolio's uh, management. Um, other than that, so I was talking about those put spreads we have. Uh, we sold the puts on LVS. Uh, those were staying neutral. Uh, sold puts on Lulu. Those are just slightly at the close. Um, from where we got them, um, so those are about even, and then we are up slightly on our Apple bull put spread. I really like the Apple one; I think that's very safe. We did a, a 380, 360 bull put spread. We will make about 345 dollars um, if that one uh, uh, expires worthless. Uh, it's got a lot of support today at 382 level. Um, bounce all the way back up to 391 intraday, um, and I look at, at that as, as going to be something that will definitely be able to hold. I, I think you know even if on down days, if we do have some uh, weakness here in the market, I think that Apple can almost be like a safe haven play for a lot of people in the same way gold is. Um, it's a company that continues to return and on investment. It's safe. It seems to not be affected by downturns in the market. In fact, they had their best some of their best performances when uh, the market was uh, really tanking. So uh, it's a company that we really like, and I think that's a safe way to play some options, make some income during uh, during hard times like now. Uh, other than that, uh, in Georgia's corner, this is a uh, uh, Georgia Ferris lead trader there. Uh, he does uh, option spreads. He only has one open position right now. That's an FXE. It's a sold 141, 140 vertical put spread. He's sitting nicely on that. Uh, dollar and cents, uh, we came out new. This is a market history kind of uh, analysis report that we put out. Um, and a lead re researcher there, Mike Mackin, came up with a new article today about what happens uh, to the market after nine down days. Um, and he found that historically, actually, nine down days uh, usually is followed through by at least one to five more down days. Um, it's only once, three times out of, I'm sorry, one time in the last seven times that we've had down nine days. Um, but then we, we finished up, so kind of the the, the uh, baby goes out with the bathwater. But, um, but what he did find was interesting was even after the nine days, Typically, for the next week to two weeks, we have significantly more pullback. Uh, so while we get a big correction uh, like this, it typically is is led off by you know a slight capitulation that happens uh, over time, and it doesn't all happen all at once. And I think a lot of people are thinking, okay, we've had this capitulation; it's all been at once. Well, I don't really know if it actually has been all at once. And so you know that when we saw this kind of numbers, when we presented with those numbers, that's when I was really confident about getting a TZA hedge, just because. You know, who knows? But historically, actually, after you know long streaks like that, we don't see a really big relief rally. Actually, historically, so I think that's a misnomer that's out there. And then our extended value portfolio, which has been getting slaughtered left and right, it's our long-term portfolio. Um, we are uh, releasing beverage equity analytics um, hopefully this week. Uh, it's on a long to-do list, and we're trying to get to it um, for tomorrow. Uh, the market got green today, and I think it does set up for a bit of relief tomorrow, but I still think we need more catalysts uh, for it to be of any any significance. I think if we don't get a catalyst, we may open up in the green and may trade around the green, but I think it could be a 20 or 30-point rally that's like we got today with probably some pressure intraday. Um, 
Initial jobless claims is the big thing tomorrow. If those are good, that's going to set up for a real nice rally into the jobs number because they've been good for that week. Back-to-back -back weeks, they've been better than expected, and that would probably get some uh, some people speculating bullishly on the jobs number on Friday. Uh, we also have some big earnings tomorrow from uh, CVS, Dean Foods, DirecTV, GM, Cena. Uh, I saw another another long list of companies that are reporting tomorrow morning covering a lot of different sectors mostly on the consumer side but that will definitely be uh, impactful in the market as well tomorrow um, Activision's earnings were good in after hours and Tesla's were slightly better than it. That's going to do it for today visit www.theactiongroup.com email us, call us, become a part of our 70% plus accuracy